short and it's late anyway. So um, I just, uh, unless somebody has some, uh, well, hold on, I'm, we've got too many screens going here. Uh, unless somebody has uh, something that uh, they want to talk about left over from, you know, from Russia. Um, I got all these documents here. Now I can't find the one I want, but anyway, I can use this one. Uh, I thought just, you know, take a couple minutes and um, talk about Gedalia. Okay. okay. Not you, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, damn. Never mind. I'm leaving. Uh, you, talk, you talk about yourself. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Actually, give me one more second. I've got to find the... Uh... Thank you, Doug. I downloaded some stuff last yesterday, last night. I can't find where I saved it to. All right. Um, in any event, who is Gedalia? Now you're frozen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm frozen. Now that you're not frozen. Question. I think he was a Jewish governor in, uh, in Israel who was assassinated by other Jews or something like along those lines. Okay, it's along those lines. <laughs> um, anybody got, uh, let me uh, hold on one second here. Okay. Um, the Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, conquered Jerusalem in roughly around 580 BCE. Right. Um, he killed or exiled most of the inhabitants of Jerusalem and appointed Gedalia, who was the son of Ach Achikam, as governor of the province of Judah. Remember that, you know, uh, what we now call Israel was split into two uh, prov provinces. Uh, Israel and Judah. He was the uh, governor of Judah. Um, and many of the uh, Jews who fled, you know, from the Babylonians, they went to Moab, Ammon, Edom, and other places. They came back to Judah um, and reestablished a reasonable life. However, uh, his name was Baalis, B-A-A-L-I-S, uh, <clears throat> who is the king of Ammon. And he didn't exactly uh, get along with the guys over in Judah. So he sent Ishmael ben Netanyah over to assassinate Gedalia. And we're told that in the year, in the seventh month, and we're not exactly sure of the year because it was four or five years after the destruction of the temple, the texts are not completely clear on that. Um, he uh, managed to uh, assassinate Gedalia and a group of other Jews in Mitzpah. Now, the only source that we have of this is 
It comes from the Book of Kings. In the Book of Kings, it says it came to pass in the seventh month that the Ishmael, the son of Netanya, the son of Elishama, of the seed royal, came and ten men with him and smote Gedalia that he died and the Jews and the Chaldeans that were with him at Mitzvah. And all the people, both small and great, and the captors of the forces arose, came to Egypt, for they were afraid of the Chaldeans. Also in Jeremiah, chapter 41, it says, In the seventh month, Ishmael, son of Netanyahu, of the royal family, one of the chief officers of the king, came with ten men to Gedaliah, at Mitzvah, and they bred together there at Mitzvah, Ishmael, son of Netanyah, and the ten men got up and struck down Gedaliah with the sword and killed him. Because the king of Babylon had appointed him governor in the land, Ishmael also killed all the Judeans who, <coughs> excuse me, who were with Gedaliah at Mitzvah and the Chaldean soldiers who happened to live there. Uh, that's the only text, biblical text that we have. Um, Josephus, you guys know who Josephus was? Mm -hmm. He has a more complete, uh, uh, more details in his text, but you know, it's Josephus and we're never sure what's accurate. In, Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the, the text for now. But in any event, that's what it stems from. Um, the observances of, of uh, Tzom Gedalia are just very simple. We, uh, we, uh, we fast from sunrise to sunset. Um, and... Uh, you know, add the various uh, passages that we uh, have for regular um, fast days, you know, into, uh, if we'd be uh, in shul, we would be reading Torah. Um, if you guys remember, last year, last July, at one point, I only put down July in 2019, uh, I did a Debar Torah on Shabbat morning uh, where I talked about the four fast days that we have during the year. Anybody remember it? Good, then I can go over it, right? <laughs> and what are the four fast days? Somebody's got to remember them. We got Tzom Gedalia. Tanit Esther. Tanit Esther. Tanit Esther. The fast of the 17th of Tibet. Let's leave Esther out of this for a moment. Let's leave Esther out of it. The fast of the 17th of Tibet. The fast of Gedalia. The 10th of Tibet. The first morning. We have, all right, we have the Tzom Gedalia, which is today. We got the 10th of Tibet, Asara Tibet, Shiva Asar Tammuz, and Tisha B'Av. Uh. Now, the other three uh, all relate to issues involving the, uh, the siege or destruction of Jerusalem and destruction of the temple. And I raised the question in that Devar Torah, should we continue with these fasts? Um, You know, and um, I found that in the in the tradition, there is a um, a mixed message on it. That in fact, um, I would just cut very you know down to the uh, instead of going through all these texts again. Um, it comes down to it that the three of the fast days, the Shivas or Batamas, the Tisha, uh, not Tisha, but Shivas or Batamas, Asar, Batevet, and Tzom Gedalia, um, the rabbis 
ultimately, I, I think you could say that the rabbis considered them optional. Um, except the problem is they've now gotten into our sedurum and everybody feels they're not optional. But anyway, they are in fact somewhat optional because they're all instituted at later times. They are clearly post-biblical fast. Um, Tisha B'Av has, uh, because there are so many, you know, I don't want to use, I hesitantly use the word coincidences, but there were so many other, so many events that happened on Tisha B'Av that there's a strong case uh, to keep Tisha B'Av as a, uh, a compulsory fast. <clears throat> but the other three really could be called um, uh, optional, which is to say that those people who wish to fast on those days um, may do so, and we're, nobody's going to uh, cast any uh, bad spells on them. And then those who uh, don't wish to, uh, okay, so you didn't fast. All right, we'll let you get away with it. Okay. Um, Well, I gotta find one more quote here. Um, I wanted to find the one that says that um, all these days will be turned into, you know, it's a one of the prophets said that these days will turn into a day of, uh, of feasting and celebration. And now I can't find it. <laughs> All right, I got too much stuff up here, so. Oh, here it is, it comes from Zechariah, chapter, uh, chapter eight, verse 19. So said the Lord of hosts, the fast, the fast of the fourth month, that's Asar B'Tevei. The fast of the fifth month, that's um, that's uh, Shiva Shabbatamuz. The fast of the seventh, no, I'm, I've got it backwards. The fourth month is Shiva Shabbatamuz. Uh, the fast of the fifth month is Tisha B'Av. The fast of the, of the seventh month, that's uh, Tzom Gedalia. And the fast of the tenth month, that's Shiva Asabatamus, shall be for the house of Judah for joy and happiness and happy holidays, but love, but love, truth, and peace. Okay, so yes, we can turn them into uh, not days of sadness, uh, as, uh, as I've been saying. Okay, any questions on any of this? Any comments? Any, uh... So today's only only optional, really. Well, you don't find you know you know if you you look into most of the uh, you know holiday books and explain all of it, uh, they won't exactly say that outright. Uh, but if you follow the the, the logic that comes out of reading some of these texts, which I'm alluding to, I didn't go through them directly. Uh, you could, we could see that we could call them optional. I consider them optional. Uh, but then again, I can't fast either, so that's. A <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. You guys are too quiet today. You must have too much. Doug knows, it was, Doug knows about his namesake now, so more about his namesake. <laughs> he probably knew it already. But. Yeah, too much zooming yesterday. Everybody's too quiet. Zoom burnout. Okay. Well, obviously, next week we won't have a study group. Um, I have a, a, a few more. Um, 
Divrei Torah and other, and other, uh, I'm sure we'll have other, you know, things in store for us um, during Yom Kippur. And um, I got to admit, I'm glad that Arlene finally got to her line of, may we, may we only hear good things from you this year. <laughs> I was waiting for that, Arlene. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't disappoint you. Yeah, thank you. But it was lovely. Every all those comments, I just got so much out of it. it was a, yeah. Very nice. I, I must admit, I enjoyed seeing you on the Adona. You and Carmi on the Adona. <laughs> <laughs> on the on the which? Adona alum. Adona alum. Yeah. Oh, uh, are we going to have David? Are we going to have access to that video? Um, it's actually already up on the website. Um, you can find it if you go to um, the worship section. Okay. I'm sorry, if you go to virtual BCBI and then look at the high holidays section. I, I, you know, I tried that last night. It wasn't there yet. So. It, I added it about it's, midnight. Oh, oh, it's, I went, it wasn't oh, quite that late. It, I am it's, on, it, it's on Facebook. It was a sleep. Right, well, what are you doing? <laughs> I got to send it to my kids, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. With that, have a good day. A Shana Tova, Mutika, Kamar Khatima Tova to all. Yeah. Come on. And as they say, we'll see you in Shul. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I, got, I just got to say that um, my son in Roanoke, his congregation rented the ball the ballpark yesterday. They have a minor league team down there. Oh. They, they rented it so they could all go and have the chauffeur service. And and uh, that's lovely. I was on the that's beach with Kabad um, for Tashlich and they blew a chauffeur there. And there were well over a hundred people on the beach. Okay. It's um, cool. I, Very creative. Well, on the beach with Chabad sounds like a new reality show. It, it really <laughs> does. It is our. It's yes. COVID has forced us all to be creative and different. Sort of. Uh, I, I saw that somebody went to the Supreme Court building and blew the shofar you know, for Ruth Bader Ginsburg, which. Oh. I saw that too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Scott Simon uh, had, a, had a piece on NPR about uh, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg and uh, the shofar blowing. You know, I, I found it interesting. I got a, somebody sent us last night a video from um, Central Synagogue in New York. And um, one of the other judges, uh, Guy's name starts with a B. Who is it? Breyer. Is it Breyer? The Jewish one? Yeah. Um, it said that he actually was uh, Zooming services on Friday night when he got a call, got the call from one of the marshals. Or he was about to say Kaddish uh, for someone who had your site for, and he got the call that she had died. Mm. And it was interesting that, that when people were interviewing, that some of the news stations on were when they were doing the reporting, referred to the fact that she died on Russia show, and that that's it's considered that only Tadikim. Um, that, that that's not only, but that that, that, that when when passes. On um, on Rosh Hashanah, it's a sign of righteousness, and and they interviewed people about um, about that. I'll buy that. <clears throat> All right, folks. See you on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> hope some of you hope some of you are coming tonight for the anti-racism book group. 
If you haven't read the whole book, you can watch her interview on NPR and know enough probably to participate. Okay. Bye. Uh, yeah. Doug. Take care. Yeah, I, I'm sorry I had to uh, cut out of your class. I only got home at two o'clock. <laughs> and I, I thought I could do the class and then eat. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So yes. some other time. I we'll definitely... get you the next time. Yeah. And I was starving also. It's, it's a Zoom. It's a product of Zoom. Yeah. Take care, everyone. Yeah. So, so, uh, I don't know if you want to post it on the um, on, on virtual BZ. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah.